In this video, we will be solving this question which says Flossie Toothsum likes to spend some time studying and some time dating. In fact, her indifference curves between hours per week spent studying and hours per week spent dating are concentric circles around her favorite combination which is 20 hours of studying and 15 hours of dating per week. The closer she is to her favorite combination, the happier she is. With this information, your A part is suppose that that Flossie is currently studying 25 hours a week and dating 3 hours a week. Would she prefer to be studying 30 hours a week and dating 8 hours a week? Uh, we are also given a hint that says remember the formula for distance between two points in the plane. So let's first see what all information is given to us. It is given in the question that indifference curve for Flossie are concentric circles around her favorite combination. Now whenever the question talks about favorite combination, then what do you mean by that in economic terms? So sometimes we want to consider a situation involving situation where there is some overall best bundle or the favorite bundle for the consumer and the closer he or she is to that best bundle the better off he or she is in terms of her own preferences. So suppose that the consumer has some most preferred bundle or the favorite bundle of goods and the bundle is as x1 bar and x2 bar and the farther away he is from that bundle the worse off he is. In this case we say that x1 bar and x2 bar is a situation point or a bliss point. The indifference curve for the consumer look like this which are almost in circular form and this black dot is your bliss point which corresponds to x1 bar units of good x1 and x2 bar units of good x2 and the arrows depict the reference direction. So the best point is x1 bar and x2 bar and the points farther away from this bliss points lie on the lower indifference curve. So suppose if there is a point here and there is another point here. So despite of the fact that this point is higher than this point but the consumer would always prefer this point to this point as this consumption bundle is closer to the bliss point. Also as you can see that this consumption bundle lies on a farther indifference curve or we can also say it lies on a lower indifference curve as it gives a lower level of satisfaction to the consumer. After learning about the situation point or the bliss point, let's come back to the question. The question says that the indifference curve are concentric circles around her favorite combination which is 20 hours of studying and 15 hours of dating. On the x-axis you have hours of studying and on the y-axis you have hours of dating and a favorite combination which is 20 hours of studying and 15 hours of dating which is this would lie here. So this green dot is your bliss point which this statement also says that the closer she is to her favorite combination the happier she is. And since her indifference curves are concentric circles which would look like this. So these red circles are her indifference curve. So with this information the question asks us that suppose Flossie is currently studying 25 hours a week and dating 3 hours a week would she prefer to study 30 hours a week and dating 8 hours a week. So we have basically two consumption bundles which are this that is your 25,3 that is 25 hours of week and 3 hours of dating which is she currently at. And the question asks us to compare this consumption bundle with this consumption bundle where she is studying 30 hours a week and dating 8 hours a week. So if you see graphically both of these points appear to be on the same indifference curve roughly speaking. But is that really the case? For that note very important part that the closer she is to her favorite combination the happier she is. So let's calculate the distance between this point and this point and then we will calculate the distance between this point and this point and compare both the distances. The one the combination giving us the lesser distance would be her preferred bundle. So let's do that. So as you know distance formula is d which is equal to square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square where d represents your distance and x1 y1 are the coordinates of your first point and x2 y2 are the coordinates of your second point as this formula is for calculating the distance between two points. So consider your first scenario when we are calculating the distance between the points 20 comma 15 and 
point twenty five comma three. So let's consider this to be your first point and this to be your second point, which implies this would be your x one. This is your y one, which are the coordinates of your first point, and this would be x two, and this would be y two, which is the coordinates of your second point. Now, in order to calculate the distance, all you have to do is just substitute the values of x one, y one, x two, and y two into this formula and evaluate. So let's do that. That would be square root of x two minus x one whole square. In our case, x two is twenty five and x one is twenty plus y two minus y one whole square. Y two is three minus fifteen whole square. So that would be five square plus minus twelve square. So that would be twenty five plus one forty four, which is one sixty nine. Now, since we only have to compare the distances, in case you don't know the square roots, you can just leave it at here. Here and since we are only dealing with the comparison, now let's consider a second scenario. So here we are calculating the distance between this point, that is twenty comma fifteen, and the point thirty comma eight. So that would be twenty comma fifteen and thirty comma. Eight. So again, comparing these points with this formulation, this would be your x one. This is your y one. Considering this point to be your first point and this point to be your second point, so this becomes your x two and this becomes your Y two. Now again, substituting the values of x one and y one, x two and y two in your formula, your distance becomes x two minus x one whole square. So that would be thirty minus twenty whole square plus. As here, your x two is thirty and x one is twenty plus y two minus y one whole square. That would be eight minus fifteen whole square. So that would be square root of ten whole square. Plus minus seven whole squared, so that would be hundred plus forty nine, which is square root of one forty nine. Now, since the distance between the point twenty comma fifteen and thirty comma eight is square root of one forty nine, and the distance between twenty comma fifteen and twenty five comma three is square root of one sixty nine, and as you can clearly see that this is a lesser distance, which means the point thirty comma eight would be closer to the point twenty comma fifteen, which is a favorite combination for Flossie. Thus, she would be closer to her favorite combination in this scenario. Hence, she would prefer thirty hours of studying. And eight hours of dating. Now moving on to the next part, which says on the axis below, draw a few of Flossie's indifference curve and use your diagram to illustrate which of the two time allocations discussed above Flossie would prefer. Now from your previous part, we saw that the Flossie would prefer thirty comma eight to the combination of twenty five comma three, as the distance between thirty comma eight and her favorite combination was lesser when compared to this combination. Now here. As I discussed in the previous part, again the indifference curve for Flossie between hours per week spent studying and hours per week spent dating are concentric circles around her favorite combination, which is twenty hours of studying and fifteen hours of dating per week. And in the previous part, we already drew the concentric circles, so which look like this, where on the x-axis you have hours of studying, on the y-axis you have hours of dating. The green dot represents her favorite combination, which is twenty comma fifteen. And since the indifference curve are concentric circles around her favorite combination. So they look like the one shown in red circles, which are her indifference curve. The question also asks us to use your diagram to illustrate which of the two time allocations discussed above Flossie would prefer. And these were the two time allocations given to us, that is thirty comma eight and twenty five comma three. We have already seen that the point thirty comma eight is closer to this to her favorite combination, or we can say it as bliss point as compared to the. Combination twenty five comma three, which means the point twenty five comma three would lie on a lower indifference curve as compared to the point thirty comma eight. So let's see that graphically. So when I draw concentric circles, keeping twenty comma fifteen as your center, which as it is your bliss point. So the black circle passes through the point thirty comma eight, and the purple circle passes through the point twenty five comma three. And here, as you can see graphically, that purple circle is your Your lower indifference curve, as it has a larger radius, and the point twenty five comma three lies on it, which means it will be giving the lower level of satisfaction, as it is a lower indifference curve. And by assuming that Flossie is a rational consumer, she will prefer the point thirty comma eight to the point twenty five comma three, as the point thirty comma eight gives her higher level of satisfaction when compared to the point twenty five comma. 
3 which is in coherence with something we calculated in the previous part.